All right, everyone, welcome along. So one of the things that we've got to talk about really is we've mentioned a few times around different areas, haven't we? Kind of like granularity and what that means. We've also touched on kind of geography and how that all starts to fit together as we look at the analysis and the whole building of a report pack and the establishment of your single pane of glass for reporting. And part of single pane of glass is about saying we're going to have standardized entities that we're going to have. And one of those things, especially for the one we're doing, is going to be around borough, because that's going to be that kind of top tier piece of geography that we're going to use. Because from our perspective, we're going to look at everything from how does it fit into its borough? Is this Manhattan? Is this Brooklyn? Is it Queens? And what does that mean as we start to slot these things together? So what we'd look to do more likely than not is to actually say, right, top level, we're going to say that. And then we'd want to be able to get that more detailed section of it, which brings us into the whole interesting topic, doesn't it? Because we're looking, aren't we, at the New York water towers right now. But before then, we looked at the bike data. And the bike data, there was, you know, a couple of thousand bike centers, bike stations around. But then those fit into the four or five boroughs, well, like six in the case of that, because you've got the, the ones in New Jersey. Right, we seven. Okay. How does that work when we start to say, well, what are we doing? I think that's, this is why I thought we, we should really have this conversation now. So without going any further, let's call over it to the Power BI service and have a look at a demo that I've set up. So we can have a look and we can kind of see, right, and see if it helps make it all land. Yeah? Champion. <laughs> So here we are, okay? This is a map of, effectively, it's the, the map of the, the 2016 US presidential election results, okay? Who won? Obama or Romney by state and by kind of county. Now, the issue that we've got here, and this is one of those things we talk about with granularity, is there's a lot more than this chart or this map can display. And we can see that because up here, if we have a look at here, if we zoom in a bit, right, we can see there are too many values showing. Okay, so there was too many, so it wasn't able to be followed through. So it's it's effectively cut out big chunks of data, right? And we know it's cut out big chunks of data because if we go to a map that supports more data points, so we've got around 30,000 here, 32,000. If we go to the Azure map, sure, okay, you'll see the impact of that. So it takes a lot longer to render and load as a map because you've got to place these 32,000 data points. Now, when we're saying that, when we place these 32,000 data points, these need to be accurately located and that's how a map works, remember. So we've got like the data layer, we've got reference layers, we've got the visualization layer in terms of what have we picked. So in this case, it's grayscale light, but you know, we could pick a different AN or the different type of map. But that's right, right at the bottom. And you could see that from when it loaded through. So if we go back to our original page in the Bing, and we come back to Azure, oh, not delete. You'll see it takes time. You'll see the data starts to appear, and then it renders the reference layers right at the bottom. Okay, That's kind of how it happens. And that's what goes on in the, the build process of it. What we can see straight away, we've got way more detail now because we've got the 30,000 data points. So we can see, for example, as we look in, we can see these following kind of along the road. So these, these counties, these, these areas, these towns are along roads. It's not really rocket science, that is it? We kind of, oh, well, obviously, okay? But it's a nice impression it gives, okay? And as I say, in terms of is there a difference with this and how it actually calculates through, there is. So if we go and we have a look at the comparison where we've got like the, the one that's quickly loaded because it's only going to present around a thousand or so data points versus the one that's got 32,000, you can definitely see there was a difference in load speed there for it. So what's the answer for it? What's going on with this and why is it a problem? So thing one, 
the thing to remember first off is that really these are a, it's a scatter plot what we're doing with both of these. Okay, so we are placing scatter plots on an x and a y axis. Okay, latitude and longitude. It's an x and a y, isn't it? Okay. So if we look at the map side on the left, but we actually look at it as, in terms of what does it look like as a scatter plot. You see, we can still see roughly what's going on. I've just made it the dots bigger where we've got the population centers. But I would hope you can still see and say, well, that's still roughly recognizable as the main line, as the main part of continental USA. Okay, so we've got that information there. That's kind of what's going on. But we can see it's limited again. And we can see again, we've got the little warning sign on the top left that we're, you know, we're not able to load everything, not able to render everything. There is an option to show a scatter plot with that many data points, and it's called Sandance. So if we go to Sandance, okay, and you'll see this is actually going to fetch everything, and it should bring through what we had before. So here we go. So I think that you can see that's pretty similar to our Azure map, okay? But what we've got here isn't a map. That's the thing. This is a scatter plot. That's all it is. But we can, you know, I want you to, you know, recognize that that's really how latitude and longitude maps are working, that you're placing a dot on an X and Y axis, and the context is being brought through by the map layer that's far underneath. There's not an actual context in terms of this is going to be a map, this is something else. It's just, it's an X and a Y plot, and then overlaid on top of something else. And in this case, there's nothing there. We could bring in a custom background if we want, but for the sake of this, I'm not going to bother. So what are we doing then with a lot of what we do? So with a lot of what we do, we want to actually get to that pace of analysis, okay? So the ballpark figure or the guidance is kind of that a, a measure shouldn't take more than two seconds to render. The result of that render, of that measure might take another second in real, real terms. So we're up to kind of like three seconds as maximum is a good page load. So that front page needs to load quickly, okay? Quickly for the front page. If you're choosing to drill down at a detail and see, well, what specifically happened in sales to people named Carl on a Thursday where they were wearing red shoes and we had all those together, then maybe that report pack could take a bit longer. So if we drill down to that, you know, we might say, oh, I've chosen to do that. It takes 10 seconds, I can live with it, okay? So the way we do this, this is where granularity comes in. So in the case of this, we would do the first stage. So we'd say, right, if we look at the state level first, and we can see we zooms in, that was quick, wasn't it? That took a couple of seconds, pages there, here are the, the states that we've got in the US versus who they voted for, okay? All right. Let's not worry about the colors, okay? Because I know they're not the right, colors for US presidential election. What we can do here then is we can hover over it. We can then drill through. Okay, so we're gonna drill through to the drill page. So we've got Iowa selected here. We drill through to Iowa and we can now see it's got all the data points there for it. But that was quick as well, wasn't it? That was quick. It wasn't slow for that to load and everything's loaded through. And we've got, if we look at the top, we don't have an eye. We've just got the arrow to go back to the main page. So what we can suddenly do is start to say, right, we can build a hierarchy for our report, because what we want to know is at the top level, how did the states vote? And realistically, the way this things work in the US, the state votes as the state. There's not a, well, 50-50 here, it went, half the votes went to an electoral college. They all go to one place. So this chart here is effectively telling the right story. And it's that detail side that you'd probably want to know. So we'd probably be able to want to say what happens if we do click, say, on um, New Jersey for the sake of, well, actually, let's go with New York, isn't it? Because New York's what we're talking about the most, isn't it? So let's go with New York. Let's right click, drill through, see the drill. Here's New York. This is what's happened. And we can zoom in and we can see everything that's happened in New York State. Okay, and again, it's quick, it's performant. So this is a way that we do it, that we go from the top tier to then drill into it. Because if we try to use 
the Azure maps as a whole, it can become complex to get everything out of it that we really want. Now, there are value adds that we've got here. So we can see in Missouri, for example, there's four or five dots that are different. And I'm, I've not chased up where I'm guessing there was some legal process that was gone through for them to change the votes. Or something like that. I'm not sure what the value add was for that, but it's interesting that they're there. And if, if I wanted to, we could go and investigate what happened in these counties. At a macro level, how do I turn around and say, right, what happened in New York State from here? And it, that's kind of difficult. So I can get like a, a select, you can do selects in here, if I can remember how. But we can select like rectangular selects like that. We could put a slicer on the side saying, well, pick a, a state. It, but it becomes difficult. But there's a, def there's a benefit from having this, because as I say, we've got the ability to really see what's happening along or in smaller areas, like down here in Montana, where there's very, the population is minimal. If we went back to the Bing maps, for example, and we look up in the Montana area, I think you can definitely agree we've got a far less dots, far fewer dots, sorry, oh, in Montana here than we did on the other side. And it, again, maps like this they're difficult to scroll around to manipulate and do stuff with like it's just it, it's just not geared up for it okay so if we return now to what we've been working on historically in terms of our england food hygiene database and data set okay hopefully this makes much more sense now in terms of why it's this structure so what we've got here is this is that top level zoom. So it's quick to load. We can easily interact and filter with it because there's not a huge number of data points that need to be tracked and manipulated and worked through. But then if we say, well, I wanna get in and find out what's going on in Newcastle, I can click, I can come through, and then it loads everything that's going on in Newcastle. And we can zoom in, and we can have a look and see, well, what restaurants are near the office so we can decide where we're gonna to go to eat tonight, okay? And that'll all work, okay? And it's performant, it's usable, okay? If we were to pick and zoom and do this and do that, it would work. If we had the 30,000 plus data points or 50,000, we'd get to problems. That said, there's a limit to how much Azure Maps will produce as well without saying there's a data limit, okay? So we wouldn't be able to put all 400,000 data points for every business that we have into the into Azure Maps. So that's kind of an issue. Well, okay, what can we do? So for your data, when you're building your geography dimension, you have to start to think about that and you have to be aware of that at all times. So for us, what that meant was actually making sure that for, um, if we look back at the US presidential elections, we had to make sure that everything had the right values in terms of does it have a country was a big thing as well, because a hierarchical search for state would produce things outside the United States because it's, oh, well, that, that name is the same as another state. We're going to use that, okay, or the abbreviation. So we need to be aware of what goes on. So there's a whole thought process that needs to be undergone and, take, and gone through. So let's have a look and see what we've done with that data. So simply put, for the election data, it was pretty simple, okay? They all had already, we've got a county name, we've got a state abbreviation, which is the key piece. But I've had to add a calculated column just for the country, because there's no country, because of course they're all from the US. But if you take out the USA from the maps, let's do that now, okay, you'll see if you look at the state level, and we remove USA from here, that all of a sudden, when it does the rendering, it picks up, oh, I've got WA, Western Australia. Okay, but it's not, it's Washington. We've got over here as well, haven't we? We've got MS for Missouri, isn't it? Um, these are things that they just, it has an impact, but you've got to go, okay, so we need to do that. So the way we get around that is by establishing a geographic hierarchy as well. 
So suddenly I'm not just telling you, oh, you need to be aware of the geographies that you're doing and what's happening. So you also need to define a proper process for everything to be there and to be drilled into. So you might have hierarchies to consider. So for us then, when we're looking at our New York data, and what we're doing with a lot of that is what we're is trying to avoid placing too many dots on. So we've got lots and lots of dots here because we use Azure Maps here to build all these, so it's map box, sorry, to place all the dots for, for it. But realistically, presumably, we should be able to do it just based on Brooklyn. So what's going on, oh, sorry, Manhattan or Brooklyn, okay? And we can see the maps are quite happy to support that, and they also become much more performant with less dots on them. So we have to be aware that maps are quite an expensive visual to place, but they also have a huge value because they bring so much context to things for people. So if you're in the UK and you look at our England food hygiene data set, and you, you know, you're used to living in England, in inner cities or something like that, you, you more than likely will gravitate or zoom in on, but where's my home? Where's my office? Oh, I go to that restaurant. I go there. And you'll have a look and you'll see. So context is kind of there and that's something that's brought through and we see that and we know that's a fact because when we look at the sand dance scatter plot of the us we know that's the us even when we look at the fairly non well fairly cut back visual of the us that we get from the standard scatter plot we know that's the us you know we can look at it and say this is the us i shouldn't need to tell you you know if i show that to somebody out on the street it looks like the us it's, but that's the context that we're bringing, okay? That's kind of that bottom map layer is the context, the internalized context that we bring. So for doing these and for building these maps, we will start to piece together and say, right, our top level that we're gonna have across everything is gonna be our New York boroughs. So everything needs to be broken down to New York borough. And we will do that. And we've already done that for these, we can see from here that we've got water towers inspected by Queens. Here they are. So we can piece that in and we need to then put in and say, right, how are we going to make that visually work? And this is then why we say, well, a shape map might be better than a filled map because a filled map has to be determined what it is. Whereas a shape map, we can define the context from where that should go. Okay, so filled map, look up, so we would hand it in and say, right, this is what you need to look up. And it will then look it up. And that can be difficult as you want different levels of granularity. It should work in New York if we're just looking at based on the New York boroughs. But we would have to test it, make sure it keeps working as well going forward. Whereas a shape map, potentially, we can avoid a lot of those issues by knowing that shape one equals Manhattan, for example, or shape two equals Queens. That's technically how they work, okay? So it's a much easier process, but it's one to be aware of. The other thing, of course, is that shape maps, for all they're called maps, they don't have a context. They are just like the scatter plots. They are over an empty plane. And if the context of the map is brought by the consumer or by the viewer. So the viewer knows that that is actually New York. So if we look at our New York taxi data set, so we look at taxis. Looking at the taxis, you can see we've got these three shape maps here, okay, with different data sets that are being presented on them based on pickups, drop offs, tip percentage by zone. Okay, now all of this isn't a map, and that's a bit that's really different. Right? These are line drawings alone. So you would have to know this is New York City, okay, if you didn't know. And so well, I don't know what that is. You can most people would look at it and say, well, it's a map, but they might not know where it's a map of. It speaks volumes that we kind of understand. Oh, that's a map of insert name here. So what do you reckon then? Okay. Maps and the structuring of geography are really important parts of any Power BI analysis these days. Now it's partly because of the shared context of geography that we, you know, we understand where this is, we, we understand that. It, it really resonates with people when they start, when we do things geographically. It's one of those things that really makes sense to people. Probably a lot more than 
a lot of the time metrics that we do. So sales last month, sales this month. If we're being honest, probably sales by city is probably one that is more meaningful. Okay. It's not to say it's better or worse. It's probably worse than the last month versus current month performance. But it's it's one of those where the value isn't necessarily all there. That said, an awful lot of the map work that we do and visualize it comes down to knowing that we're not using a map. So like shape maps, for example, which again, they're simpler, they're quicker to do, although you need to manage how many shapes are in your shape map. So how many tiles or tessellations or little structural elements are there for it? Too many and it's super slow, too few and the granularity isn't there for your data. But people want to be able to say, well, what's happening in a particular point of my of my analysis? So, you know, in the New York taxi stuff, in the New York water towers as well, we joked about, well, you know, John Wick, you know, where's near the continental? What's going on? There's context there. You know, we, we can understand that, we can appreciate it. But it doesn't necessarily equate to anything that's in the data. That's something that we are bringing to the analysis. There's a context that is accepted or expected when we say, oh, John Wick. You know, some people have no idea who John Wick is. I don't know those films. That frame of reference we completely lost. But somebody who's aware of, I've seen the Continental, I've seen what's going on, I've watched that, it's around New York City. There's context that they bring to that charter. Okay? It's that shared story, isn't it? Now, when it comes to building our geography dimensions, I think as we've mentioned, in, to get that top level down, we have to put in a country first. You know, to do our taxi data set, we're going to have to do potentially state because New Jersey is a different state to New York City. So we might need state city. And we might have to check, does, does Manhattan come through as a city? Does that work? If we go state city based on what those data sets are. And then when you drill through, that's when we put in the latitude and longitude of the bike centers of the buildings. Yeah. So does that work? Is that the right way to do it? Taxi-wise, we haven't got GPS coordinates. We haven't got latitude and longitude of start or end of journey. We've got this um, NTA. So where, where is it picked up from? Like it's a small area. I think it's 15,000 people or so is what's supposed to be in an NTA. Um, so that all works though, doesn't it? We can follow it through, we can understand what's happening. And that's why it's really important that we actually start to think about location and shape and where it all fits together, because we have to be able to understand where it's going. Okay, When are we going to have to use a hierarchy of country to state to city versus latitude and longitude? What's the impact of using latitude and longitude versus the benefit of it? Does it make the visual really slow? Does it work today, but we're expecting to double the numbers in 12 months, in which case will it stop working, in which case we should go with a hierarchy-based solution? And a hierarchy to drill down really works, and it can be really quick and give that real detail down view that's needed for people. So I hope you've enjoyed that. You know, if you think, yeah, that makes a lot of sense, I really want to discuss that some more. Put a comment down below. Let us know your thoughts. You know, have I not covered enough for you? Is there something that you think I've misrepresented? Tell me. As ever, if you'd like to use us for consultancy, send us an email. It's office at geordieconsulting.co.uk and we'll be in touch and we'll get together and we'll make your reports fantastic, we'll make your business sing. Okay. For now, though, stay safe, take care. Ta-da.